So we've established how to create variables and how to assign values to that variable. But this time we want to take a look a little bit more at the assignment side of things. Is there a way for us to not just replace the value? So using the standard equals assignment operator, we'll simply delete whatever's in the box. So imagine you going into the box and just chucking the stuff out and just throwing it in the bin and then adding something else into that box. So what we're doing is we're just replacing, but can we morph the data? Can we use the existing data and change it in some way? And the answer is yes. And this is incredibly useful and it will serve you very well in the future of JavaScript programming. So first of all, let's make sure that we have that console window open again, and I'm gonna create the variable called person name again, and let's assign the value of hello world. Now, when I call person name, we now know that this variable has the string hello world. So I want to call person name, and we don't want to just do a regular assignment, which means take whatever is in the box, delete it, and put something new in there. No, we want to change what's in the box. So I want to say plus equals. Now plus equals is a numerical or arithmetic assignment operator as well as a concatenation assignment operator. So as we already have a string, which is hello world in person name, I'm gonna do some concatenation. So I'm gonna say plus equals, and then I'm going to go ahead and just say another append. And then again, put in that all important semicolon. I've finished my command, my instruction to the JIT compiler. And when I hit return, you'll see that it didn't delete the existing string, which was hello world. It actually appended onto, added this string onto the value that was already in the variable. That's nice and easy. So this is the only one that will actually work with string data. And if I was to, let's say, append a number, well, don't forget that strings take precedent in JavaScript. So if I say plus equals, it polymorphs, it handles that data type, which is a number, and it says, oh, there's already a string here. So it converts it to a string. And then what it does is it just concatenates it onto the end. So your numbers will become strings when adding or concatenating a number to a string, period. Now let's take a look at changing the variable person name to a number, because now we want to do some arithmetic assignment operators. So I'm gonna say 10. So person name now equals 10. What can we do here? Well, again, what we could do is say person name plus equals, which means we're not concatenating. What we're doing is we're doing an addition. So I say plus five, which will return 15. It didn't delete the data in the box. It changed the data in the box. Now be careful here, because if I was to concatenate a string, so even though this is a number, it's within a string. So technically this is string data and I'm now trying to concatenate a string and strings always take precedence. So what's gonna happen is you're going to get a string 155. So it took 15, converted it to a string and then it concatenated the string five onto the end of it. So you need to be very, very careful with this. Let's set person name back to 10 again. Now we can also do all of the other operations that you previously saw in the last lecture when we were looking at arithmetic operators, you can do those arithmetic operators on assignment. So again, person name, and then let's go ahead and do minus. So we're gonna do subtraction now, minus equals, and then we're gonna say five. Now please note, you must be working with all numbers when it comes to these arithmetic assignment operators. The plus is a little bit different because that works with numbers and strings. However, all of these other operators that I'm about to show you will only work when working with numbers. So in my case, I say negative equals five, and we get five because previously, person name was equal to 10, negative five equals five. Let's go ahead and say that we want to times by five. So we put in the asterisk 
equals 5. So it's going to morph 5. 5 times 5 is 25. And there we go. Person name now equals 25. And just to show you, if I call this variable, there you go. It's morphed. It's changed the value. Then on top of that, we can also do divide. So 25 divide by 5 and change the value. So that's what that equals is there for. And guess what? We get 5 again. Now, also, you can do a modulus divide, which is a divide that gives us the remainder. So I can say person name, modulus divide, which is the percentage sign, equals, and then I'm going to say 2. Now, think about this. What will be the return value? Well, you can only fit two twos. So that's a maximum of 4. And you have a remainder of 1. So we should get 1. There you go. Person name equals 1. It's that simple. So here are your arithmetic assignments. And don't forget you also have plus equals as well. And let's say that you wanted to say pop in a string and hit return. You're going to get nan, which don't forget means not a number. Whenever you place a string within an equation, you will get nan, not a number. So you know the equation is invalid. And now you'll notice that person name is actually equal to the primitive of nan. It's not a number. It doesn't know what it is anymore. You've confused it. So that's what we have here. And there we have it. We have our assignment operators. Now for strings, you just have the plus equals. And for numbers, you have a lot more flexibility. It doesn't matter whether it's a floating point number, which don't forget is a decimal point number or a whole integer. You can use minus equals, plus equals, asterisk equals, which is multiplication, backslash equals, and also the percentage and equals sign operators. So you have a lot more with numbers. However, with strings, they're even more basic. They just allow concatenation. That's it.